The FL Studio 6 mixer has considerably enhanced and more powerful functionality compared to previous versions. Key amongst these enhancements is the ability to route audio from one track to any of the 64 tracks in the mixer, along with the send tracks and the master track. For users of previous versions of FL Studio, you may remember that the send level knobs for each track were in the track properties box over by the EQ, panning and volume controls. Now when you select a track in the mixer, you'll notice a series of orange indicator lights across the mixer row. These indicate tracks to which signal from the current track is being sent. Above each of them is a send amount knob, which allows you to control how much of the signal is sent to this track. By default, the send amount to the master output is set to 100%, and to each of the four sends, it's set to zero. To send signal to any other track, activate the grey upwards arrow on the track you wish to send to, and then adjust the send amount knob for that track. There are numerous applications for this functionality. For example, you could use this to submix several channels down to one channel, such as a drum kit. In this example, I have each of my four kit elements assigned to four mixer tracks. I want to submix them down to a fifth track, so I will select each kit track and then activate the Enable Send switch on track 5, and because we want to mix our kit down before the master output, I will also disable the send switch on the master output for each of the channels. Now I can control the overall volume of the kit with the single slider on track 5. Another application might be where you send the signal to multiple tracks to expand on the default four send tracks included with a mixer. You would also find this functionality useful for surround mixing, whereby you would send the output of the track to several tracks each with their output set as a different output on your sound card, each of which represents a different channel in the surround layout. Because the send amounts can be fully automated within FL Studio, you can achieve similar flexibility to what you would get in a dedicated surround mixing environment. An important thing to note with this new mixer routing functionality is that it is not possible to set up circular dependencies within the mixer. Once you have routed signal from one track into another, you cannot then mix the signal in the destination track back into the original track. To indicate this, the arrow switch then becomes inactive on the source track. Along with the new routing capabilities, the rest of the mixer is received an overhaul as well. The layout of the mixer can be altered by selecting options under the View Mixer Options menu. One of the most noticeable features is the great big peak meter. This gives you accurate visual feedback on the levels of the currently selected track. Hovering the mouse at various points on the meter will show detailed information about the dB and percentage volume level in the hint bar. Each mixer track now also has a dedicated mute and solo button. Left clicking the button will mute the track, and right clicking will solo the track. To solo other tracks, left click their mute solo button as well. Right click once or twice on a solo track to unsolo all tracks. Each mixer strip has an effects enable and disable button. This will become active when you insert an effect into one of the track's eight insert slots. Click the button to disable all effects on the track. Underneath the effects button is the arm disc recording button. Also the track input and output drop downs have been moved around to better reflect the flow of the signal. Two additional filters have been added to the track properties box as well. Just next to the volume slider is the swap left and right channels button, and underneath it is the phase invert button. Navigation within the mixer has been improved also. Where before you had to select the bank of faders you wanted to edit, you can now move the slider at the top of the mixer window to reveal other tracks. You can achieve the same thing by scrolling with the wheel of your mouse to move through the tracks. The mixer itself is also resizable, allowing you to reveal as many tracks as your monitor can show. Tidying over from functionality in previous versions, you can also move through tracks by using the left and right arrow keys. The up and down keys will move you through four tracks at a time. The handling of plug-in effects has changed a little too. To show a plug-in effect window, just left click as usual on the effect name. However, right clicking the name will allow you to rename the effect. This is useful when you need to be reminded what a particular effect is doing on your track. Finally, a little bit of functionality from previous versions that you might not have been aware of. A mixer track can have its current configuration saved as a mixer state. By selecting File, Browse States from the Mixer Options menu, you will reveal saved mixer state preset files in the browser. You can then drag and drop these preset files directly onto your track. Similar to this is the ability to drag and drop presets for particular effects onto an effects slot. You can use this to quickly replace effects with completely different effects. One other thing that you might not be aware of is the Smart Disable for effect plugins. 
When this is active, plugins will stop using CPU after 4 seconds of inactivity. The plugin will become active again the moment it receives a new audio signal. This is exceptionally smooth and without clicks on most effects, and will often cause a noticeable drop in CPU usage on your track. On long time effect plugins such as Reverb, however, it is not useful and will cause dropouts if the tail of the reverb goes longer than 4 seconds.